Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to launch ANSYS as well as save in ANSYS. Now in order to do that, you'll need to make sure you have access to the software, which you can do uh, via two methods. The first is having it downloaded to your personal Windows PC. It does not work in Mac, unfortunately. Uh, the other method is to use Apps on Demand if you're a Cornell student, and that works on any computer. And I'll show you how to do uh, both of those methods in this video. So first, you'll want to make sure you have ANSYS downloaded if you're using your personal Windows PC. Um, and to do that, you'll want to go to ansys.com, go to Academic, and then ANSYS Free Student Software Downloads, or you can just follow this link up here. Scroll down and then click on ANSYS Student, and then you'll want to download the most recent version of ANSYS, which in this case is ANSYS Student 2020 R2. You'll just click on this link here. Once you have it downloaded and you followed the whole process, uh, go ahead and open up Workbench. So you'll type in Workbench, and then you should see the latest version pop up, which in my case, again, is Workbench 2020 R2. So I'll go ahead and click on it, and then it'll take a few moments to uh, load in. To access ANSYS using Apps on Demand, you'll first want to go to Canvas. So go here to Canvas, and then you'll see Apps on Demand here for whatever course you're in. Um, so go ahead and click on that, and it'll bring you to this Amazon server web page here, which is Apps on Demand here. And you see all these uh, applications that you have available to use. Um, you currently see two versions here, um, which is Workbench 2020 R1 as well as Workbench 2019 R3. Uh, so just go ahead and click on the newest version. So I'm going to click here. So now it's going to... Uh, Prepare your session, so this could be anywhere between zero and two minutes, so go ahead and just let that connect. All right, so after a couple of minutes, you should see this pop up on your screen, um, which is ANSYS Workbench, which you can make full screen as well. Now what you want to do is you want to link your Google Drive account so that you can save your projects and have access to them later, because currently, if you just save your project now, it will only be saved on the Amazon server and then discarded once your session is over. So you want to make sure that one of the first things you do is save your project. Um, so again, in order to do that, you'll need to link your Google Drive account. Go ahead and click on the four boxes up here and then click Google Drive File Stream. Alternatively, you could do this first before opening up Workbench. Um, it's one of the lists of applications that you have access to. So go ahead and sign in to your Google Drive account. I'll go ahead and do this. Okay, now that I've signed in, you should see this on your screen. It'll give you a quick walkthrough of what, you sh uh, what you're able to do. And then once you close out, this should kind of pop up. Now this is very important because this gives you access to your Google Drive account so that you can save um, your projects. And this is how you know uh, that you have correctly linked up your Google Drive account. So if you go to this PC, you should see Google Drive File Stream. If you double click that, click on My Drive, that's uh, my folder. And then I've created a special folder called App Stream Folder. As you can see, I have a lot of folders. Um, but if I click on that, you can see a lot of uh, projects that I've added to my Drive account. So this is how you can access it. So now I'm going to talk to you about how to save in ANSYS. There is one quick note that I would like to make here, which is uh, the temporary folder here. Now, every session you have on Apps on Demand, you will have access to a temporary folder. And these are temporary files that um, you can have access to during your session. It starts off clean, so you can add files to it. If you're using uh, static structural in ANSYS, you'll want to make sure that you move all your files into the temporary files, and then once you're done, transfer it back to the Google Drive file stream. For some reason, if you run static structural um, without having the file located in temporary files, uh, you won't be able to have access to your results. It'll just throw an error. That error is resolved if you just operate it in the temporary files. Um, secondly, if you have a big project that you want to run, um, and it's, it could take a considerable amount of time, if you run the project in temporary files, it is, uh, you should get a faster results. Um, it, it's not noticeable for short projects, but again, if you're going to run like a, an hour or so um, project, you want to make sure it's in temporary files to increase the speed. All right, so you're now ready to save your project in ANSYS. So, 
Uh, first, what you'll want to do is click File, Save As. Oops, File, Save As. And then you'll want to click uh, the correct location. So if you're using your personal computer, just save it to the folder that you want. If you're on apps on demand like I am, you can save it to your Google file stream, which for me would be in here, my drive, and then app stream folder. Um, or if you're doing static structural, you'll want to save it to your temporary files and then move it over to your Google file stream before you're done with your session. So I'm gonna click temporary files because that's where I'm gonna save it. And then go ahead and just put a name in here. So I'm gonna say demo file and then save. So what I've just shown you is how to save your project in a WBPJ format. So this is in my temporary files folder here, um, which shows the WBPJ file um, that we just saved. Now, it's also important to note that there's two other files here that are saved, which are, um, so my file was named demo files. Um, so it has files.backup as well as just regular files. Um, it's important to note that when you move from when you close out your project and reopen it, you'll need to still have access to these files. So there's an easier way to save your project, um, which is to file an archive. And it saves all of those files, uh, these demo files and backup and stuff, under one WBPZ file. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and save it here. And you'll want to, I just have everything clicked. Um, so that it saves everything into that one file um, and then click archive. Okay, so if we go back to our temporary files here, we should see the WBPZ file, which is the one file that you can move around. Um, and you'll also notice that it is less in size than your WBPJ file, um, and that's by design. What we recommend is that at the beginning of your project, if you're just starting, you just do file and then you can save as with your WBPJ format. But at the end of your session, um, even if you're on your Windows PC uh, or in Amazon AppStream, you'll want to file and then archive the project. Um, and so let's say we're gonna archive this project to my uh, Google Drive file stream. So I'll do file, my drive, apps on demand file. You can save it here. I'll click save, archive, and then it'll show up in my Google Drive folder.